Hi there, guys, and uh, thanks so much for taking the time to tune in. Um, what have we got for you over the next 30 minutes? Well, um, if you like to shoot landscapes, but you're feeling kind of a little bit short on ideas or inspiration, um, maybe all the locations that you normally shoot, you kind of feel like you've done to death, or maybe you've kind of got out of the groove of shooting during kind of the restrictions and you just need some kind of inspiration to sort of kickstart yourself back into it again, um, then this 30 minutes is for you. Um, because um, I asked uh, singer ambassador Mark Cornick for his three favorite landscape locations in the UK. And I asked him if he could kind of give us the lowdown on exactly how you go about uh, sort of approaching these locations. So when to go, what it's like there, what, it is, what it's like to shoot there, what kind of shots you can get, what kind of gear you'd use, kind of just everything you need to know about where these locations are and how to shoot them. And Mark's come back with his three and all three of them are in Cornwall. Isn't that right, Mark? It is, yeah. Cornwall is, uh, for me, a, a very special place. So that's what I wanted to talk about today. Amazing. So why, why Cornwall? Why do, you, why do you like it so much? I think there are a variety of reasons. Uh, personal connections to, to Cornwall. Uh, it's somewhere that uh, we've been travelling to as a family for all of my life. Uh, I think I first visited when I was one month old. Um, been coming back ever since. And then um, as photography started becoming uh, a main focus for me, uh, the Cornish coast really was uh, somewhere that I would focus a lot of my, my work. And uh, most of my major portfolios have been shot on, on Cornish beaches. So that's what I'd, I'd like to tell you a bit about today. Amazing, yeah, I'm, I'm the same as you. Like I've spent a lot of time there as a kid and just something about Cornwall is absolutely kind of magical. Just like the the, the, sort yeah. of the craggy coves and the and the just the bit, oh, just everything about it is just yeah, amazing. absolutely. I think I think if you if it's somewhere that you you grew up going to as a child and then come back to um, later in life, you, you really have that sort of connection to the place um, and it, yeah, it sort yeah. of the images you make there mean mean something to you. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. And the other good thing about choosing all three locations in Cornwall is that. For somebody watching this who thinks, oh, yeah, I love the look of that. I want to go at that location. You can actually do all three because they're quite close together, aren't they, these three? Not too far apart. Definitely if you're down down in Cornwall for a week or two weeks, you could shoot all of these locations easily, yeah. Amazing. Well, I'm looking forward to this because uh, I'm planning on a trip to Cornwall this year, so I'm hoping to uh, drop into these and get some shots. I have a feeling a few people will be going to Cornwall this summer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right, so let's just, um, so we've done a map, haven't we? That we so we can just sort of see um, just kind of where these locations are in relation to the rest of the um, uh, the UK, I guess. So um, so this is kind of a, yeah, the southwest of, of, of Britain. You've got the sort of the south tip of Wales there. Um, and then the, the light blue line is the border between Devon and Cornwall, Cornwall being on the left, of course. Um, so, I mean, I guess Cornwall is, you know, it's relatively quiet in terms of, sort of big cities big urban areas you've got Newquay there but there's not really many big really big towns down sort of when you go down right down certainly down to the tip but it can get busy with tourists kind of in the in the sort of uh, the, the summer months absolutely absolutely the summer months it's gonna be gonna be busy with tourists you, you, you're not gonna be able to avoid that but um these locations i think uh, are, are places you can visit and and um also at certain times if you're lucky manage to get some tranquility and, and some peace and quiet as well hopefully amazing okay so the area there in yellow is the is sort of the area where all three of your locations are sort of contained so we're just gonna um we're just kind of kind of going to kind of zoom in on that on that yellow area so i guess i don't know i always call it like the claw of cornwall i don't know whether that's yeah. a thing but it kind of looks like a claw doesn't it so let's have a look at that up close so um so you've got two um two your first two locations are sort of out on the right on the west western tip of Cornwall so yeah. that's um, uh, kind of not far from Land's End I guess is it? Not far at all probably about 10 minutes by car you're, you're okay. really right at the uh, you know the, the, the very tip of Cornwall here you couldn't, you couldn't get much further away <laughs> okay yeah from my house unfortunately it's like it is pretty much apart from like the far north of Scotland it is geographically the most difficult place to get to so it is, that, but, it? <laughs> it is but I like to think it's well well worth worth the effort and time it takes to get there for, for yeah. the rewards that it can offer yeah pretty well that's true I mean good good photos don't always come easy do they you've got to work for them so um, absolutely you know. 
Um, and then your third location is kind of between Porth Leven and Lizard, which is kind yeah. of on that sort of western facing bit of coastline there. Um, so we'll take a look at these three in turn and um, and you can kind of talk through um, sort of how you go about shooting them and why you love them, really. So um, so let's start with Senan. So, um, so this is, um, I guess it's like, I mean, it's a long way because, you know, depending on where you're coming from, but if, you, if you're if you coming from sort of the main sort of part of England, it's a long way because you've got to go all the way right down through Devon. Yeah. But, but in terms of kind of actually navigating it, it's relatively easy, isn't it? It's easy. It's, yeah, as you can see, the A30 is the, the main road down. Uh, Senan Cove uh, and Senan Beach is one of the one of the busiest most popular family friendly locations so it's it's easily accessible has fantastic facilities uh and is great obviously for families and photography mm, amazing and that a30 just tracks back up to sort of through launston and then up to exeter and then you can get on the m5 from there so and yeah. I, th- I think i'm right in saying i could be wrong i'll probably be correct on this but i think the a30 was the one that they were dueling so you can um, it used to be single track, but they've dual carriageway. All, they are, some or all they are doing. They are doing improvements on it. Yeah. Yeah. So that kind of that will speed things up a bit. So like, yeah. That so actually potentially you could get down there even in summer without too many queues, which is which is good. Um, okay. So um, let's take a look. So uh, you've sent me a shot, a few shots of um, Senna. Now you're um, you're kind of a, an abstract landscape photographer, I guess. Um, first and yeah. foremost. So your shots are kind of you use a lot of intentional camera movement and stuff to yeah. get kind of blur in your shots but you also sent me a kind of an establishing shot which is um uh, just to just so people can sort of see what this place looks like so this isn't one of your portfolio shots or anything no, it's just, just a snapshot a, kind of thing just a quick yeah. snapshot yeah yeah brilliant okay so let's, let's bring this up so talk us through it so there we can see uh Senan is is perfect for um all types of, of coastal photography. We have these these large rocks and boulders here that are that can be uh, can be used in your photographs. And then to the right is a beautiful sandy beach, um, uninterrupted sands, uh, and, and and looking straight out onto the ocean. Um, brilliant for for capturing wide uh, open skies and and using the ocean as uh, foreground interest in, in the shots. And it's also got some dunes, hasn't it? Yeah, so if you were to, to turn around and face backwards, there is a, uh, a grassy cliff which uh, leads up to one of the main car parks um, and is also really great for um, compositional aids in your photographs to use the uh, the grass uh, in the foreground. Nice. So it's a bit of it's sort of a perfect beach, really. It's got, you've got your, your sand, your dunes and your um, stones, so it's kind of a bit yeah. of everything. So in terms of foreground really, interest and yeah. those to play with. It really is one of the best beaches I've ever been to. I absolutely love Senan. Amazing, and what you one thing you can see in this shot is that the sun is setting sort of right out there to sea, and that's because if we go back to the map, you can see that Senan is um, sort of a, a west facing or north n- northwest, I guess, facing cove, um, which means that you know sun sets in the west, so you've got um, you've got the sun always going down out to sea, which is which is great if you if you like that in your landscape photos. It's you know a lot of people like to have the sun in the shot, don't they? Yeah, I think um, shooting at, at golden hours, at, uh, especially at sunset in Senan, is really, really rewarding. I've, I've managed, I've been lucky enough to get some absolutely beautiful colours in the sky, whether those be fiery orangey sunsets or, or stormy uh, atmospheric uh, clouds. I think you know, either, either condition works fantastically. Yeah, 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 brilliant. And now you said this is a this is a sort of um, a relatively popular sort of tourist um, beach. Uh, does that make it difficult to shoot at, or is it? I, okay? I don't think it, sh- it shouldn't hinder you too much. Um, obviously, during the day, it's going to be extremely busy with with families and surfers and, and etc. But if you time your visits uh, either in earlier in the morning or later in the evening, you should still, relatively speaking, have. Uh, a large proportion of the beach to yourself and you would definitely be able to find spots where you you can you can work and and not be worried about other people yeah brilliant okay yeah because it looks like quite a big beach it's not like one of those yeah, like, tiny coves it's a... there's so much space so much space yeah. that you, you're always going to find your own your own patch to work in brilliant okay well let's take a quick look at 
um, some of your shots. So we, uh, we've, you've sent me, um, I think, five shots of Senna, and, and all of these are shot in that sort of abstract, um, intentional camera movement style. Yeah. So let's bring some up and take a look. So here's the first one. So this is, I've uh, got some yeah. dunes in the foreground then. Yeah, so those are the, the, the dunes that we were talking about uh, that you can walk up through. And I think they really, really work well to use, um, especially with, with intentional camera movement, using the grass really gives that sense of motion to the image. And um, yeah. I really love the contrast of the, of the colors of the, the greens of the, the grasses, and then against the, the ocean and the, and the sky. Amazing, yeah, I love that shot. That's, that's so good. It's so I like, think it's, it's, probably, it, it's probably my favorite, favorite image that I've taken at seven. Yeah, I love it. It's brilliant. That's really cool. Um, and then a similar kind of one. So this is looking sort of more back at the dunes, is it kind of thing? Or uh, so this is down right down on onto the beach. So you've walked through the dunes now yeah. onto the beach, and then obviously just to the left is the ocean. And this is a, a medium to low tide, so you get um, these shallow pools of water that are, are revealed at, at that time, and they they work really well, I think, uh, to aid in compositions because they make some beautiful patterns. Um, and then I love the yellows of the headland and the sand. Yeah. And then this is probably uh, 45 minutes to an hour before before sunset really kicked in. So you still got the blues in the sky, but I think the color balance really gives it a, a vibrant energy. It's another, yeah, really, another favorite shot. Yeah, that's, yeah, it's lovely, really nice colors. And let's have a look at this one. So this is um, looking sort of out towards yeah. the, the sort so, of right-hand headland there, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. So again, that's probably about two steps left from the previous shot, but just facing the ocean, uh, just to show you that the the you know the waves coming in also create these these really nice patterns. Um, and again, the wide open skies. Yeah. You know, the, the skies just go on forever. Um, and so then, how do you? I mean, how do you tackle that like, as, a, as a landscape photographer for those sort of big skies? What's the what, well, what I, conditions are best for those? Well, I really, I really, really like photographing moodier skies, and for me, you really want to have uh, some clouds and some, you know, some some something going on in the sky to work with, yeah. um, as opposed to a, a flat blue sky. Um, I think moody clouds or white fluffy cloud, any sort of cloud. Um, or interest in the sky is really going to help um, okay, bring great. bring some drama and, and, and energy to the shot. A bit like this one, for example, that has like some really yeah. sort of, sort of uh, dark storm clouds in. And that, uh, I, yeah. I mean, that's my favourite of the bunch. I think I love that shot. It's, it's really so I, cool. I, I think I've always been drawn to to storm stormier conditions and moodier conditions. I think it's it really helps add atmosphere to the shot and you know a bit of a it's all, almost a bit menacing yeah. um you sort of you can tell that there's a storm that, that's about to happen and you know sort of ele electricity energy in the, in the air and um, yeah yeah, you know, yeah. You, you're like you, you know you, you're working quick because you know you're about to get absolutely soaked <laughs> <laughs> yeah but, um yeah. this one also shows you those those pools of water and yes. little shallows that, that lead back to the ocean, which yeah. I think really, really help when you're photographing, create a, you know, sort of a balance and a, um, to the image. Yeah, that is super, super cool. Okay, and then one last shot of Senan. So this one is the sunset shot. And I, one yeah. thing, nice thing here is that you've got, um, uh, you, you've got sort of that wet sand in the foreground, and, yeah. the, and the, by by having because the sun sets out to sea, you've got that. Yeah, you know, it's really it sort I, of yeah. reflects the. the I light, really love the way that the yeah, like, I love the way that those colours come out in the wet sand. Really, yeah. really nice. So that's looking uh, to the left, back yeah. towards uh, the the small village and those the dark boulders you can see on the left. That is fantastic, absolutely gorgeous, mate. Right, um, so that's kind of Senan, and um, uh, so it's, it's it's sort of in a nutshell. It, I guess it's like it's. I mean, it's a tourist beach, but get there early or get there late, and you're okay. It's a big place. Look for textures in the sky. Um, you've got some nice foreground interest in the dunes and the stones and the sand and the pools of water. Um, look for reflections. So those are the kind. That's kind of the, the basic approach, right? I think so. Uh... For me, it's it's perfect because of the technique that I use. 
to create those images. Um, yeah. You might arrive and think, well, it's it's just a lot of open open sand and, and open skies, but try and use that to your advantage. Yeah, 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 for sure. Brilliant. Okay, um, so let's move on to the next location. So this one, so so that was Senan, and then if yeah. we go up the coast a little bit, so it's actually kind of in the same bay, isn't it? It's, it's just like really, really close. It's ten minutes by car, or at, at low tide, you can walk from Senan over to Gwenva. Right. You, okay. You need to be careful because you don't want to get trapped. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Right. Brilliant. So I okay. Advise, so I would advise driving. <laughs> Right. <laughs> okay. So um, again, you've sent um, sort of an establishing shot over just yeah, so you can see what an idea of like. what it looks like. So you can see in the in the distance that's the the small town of Senen. So you can see how close they are. I see. Yeah. Um, it's yeah. Uh, a lot less populated, mainly because you need to be aware there is less parking, there's less facilities, and there is a a very steep walk down to the beach. Right. Okay. And when you get there, is it a similar kind of beach? I mean, look, by the look of this, it's quite a lot of sand. Is it? It's, is it it's, again, it's, it's a combination of sand and rocks. Um, okay. It's a lot smaller. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, there's similar, similar things to work with here. Um, I wanted to include this one because uh, at this beach, you really can have the place to yourself, um, even during high season. Uh, so the, I've been here a number of times. Um, and on each occasion, I think there were maybe two or three groups of other people uh, who then shortly left. So I really had the sunset and the beach to myself. And that is one of my favorite things That's to be amazing. able to just have a beach to yourself with beautiful scenery, the, the sounds of the ocean. And then you're just, you know, free to, to, to yeah. in, either enjoy it and, and and shoot some images. You couldn't really do better than that. No, love that. Yeah, that's unbeatable. Okay, so let's uh, so we've got three more shots. So th uh, for this location, these are again three more sort of, yeah. sort of abstract shots. And then in the next location, we go to sort of some more realistic, some more conventional sort of seas again. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I say realistic, but they're all realistic, aren't they? But yeah, more conventional. Yeah. Okay, so um, first one, um, uh, I guess, kind of similar to the the Senen shots. You've got that um, bit it's of a similar approach. Yeah, you've got yeah. The, the, the sort of the same the same elements to work with. Uh, and um, this is obviously looking uh, towards the headland, and and then again you just really using the, the the shapes and patterns that are created by by the the ocean coming in to create that interest. And again, another beautiful sky. And um, yeah, this is this is my fa my favourite shot from Gwenva. I really like that's um, sea, uh, a, a big uh, clump of seaweed there that I've used uh, in the foreground. I thought would make really. Quite interesting, and the light was and the light was shining off of it, creating these little little streaks of yeah, that's cool. Light going over there, and the, it's got some beautiful yellow sands. So again, yeah, I think this just shows uh, how beautiful this place can be, um, and something really nice to work with. Yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. And then we've got one more shot of Gwynvert, um, which is. Um, this one, this is quite. I really like this shot. It's really interesting. Yeah, it's kind of got almost got like a swirly kind of. Get, yeah, that's stuff. again just waiting for the for the waves to do the right thing and, and capturing it um, as, as you go. I think this one has a really good energy. I love that the pace of the of the water. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So and what's, you, what's your shutter speed on this? That one's probably about one second. Okay. Um, so usually my ICMs are anywhere between one and three seconds. Uh, yeah. This one's slightly shorter just to get that more uh, a pack, uh, a pack, a bigger punch with the with the movement in the water. Yes, yeah. So yeah, yeah. You, again, you probably want to time your visit for a, a lower tide, okay. so that you can get right down uh, onto the beach there, because it, it, yeah. it has a really start uh, a really steep uh, drop off. Does it? Okay. So you need to be yeah. careful of that. Right. Yeah. Brilliant. Good advice. Good advice. Okay. Um. So and um. We'll come back to gear at the end and just we'll just talk about sort of all three and we can just go through what kind of lenses you might want to use to shoot these. Um, but let's first go to your third location. Now, I knew that if I said to you, uh, can I have three locations? I knew you'd come back with five. <laughs> You're that kind of guy, Mark. So, uh, you get <laughs> so you three just to, locations. Yeah, just to, to make it a little bit more awkward. Yeah, yeah. So your third one, you've kind of split into um, three different ones. So I, um, I, I don't think I've cheated too much because you can visit all three of these in the same evening session. 
Right, they're okay. Because really, so, they're all really close together. Yeah, those white lines are kind of paths, so you can just um, you can just sort of walk easily between between them, can't you? Um, it's not yeah. like you've got to climb up any climb up any cliffs or anything. You can just kind of just walk between. And it, this is a I had a look on Google Maps, and this is about an hour's drive from, or just just less than an hour maybe from those yeah. first two locations. So you could, yeah. you know, it's not a million miles away to do it all in one trip. It's not it's not too bad at all. No. no. Okay, so let's start with three A, which is um, mm-hmm. Gunwallow Church Cove. So. Yeah. Um, so this one um, is a bit, let's just bring up the shot. Um, yes, this is a more sort of um, uh, what was the word used again? Not realistic. Um, I guess more conventional. Conventional. <laughs> yeah, conventional. Like. Yeah. So uh, yeah, this looks lovely. Um, those uh, nice bit of foreground interest there, rule yeah. of thirds. Um, yeah, nicely taken shot. That nice light. It's a it's a really nice beach. So uh, if if you want to just drop drop the map back on, I can explain. Um, yeah. So the car, there's a National Trust car park here, okay, which is of a, of a good size, and it's it's located between Gunwallow Church Cove and Dollar Cove. Um, okay. So that's where you'll arrive. Yeah, uh, and then you can easily walk uh, to either one of the these two beaches, uh, Gunwallow Church Cove, um, so called because there is a medieval church that lies right right on the beach. It's really quite quite a beautiful thing to to see. Uh, and also probably now famous as a pole dark filming location. Ah. Um, so that's the first beach that you can that you can visit with with that shot that we just showed there. Yeah. Nice. And then um, so that's that one. It's a, it's a it's a nice beach. It's again at sunset. You'll probably have the place relatively speaking to yourself. Yeah. Um, there's okay. some some nice rocks to work with there for for composition, and it, it's just a, a again a nice. Uh, tranquil, tranquil place to be, and you could either shoot the sea like that shot, or you could use the church um, in your in your shots. Nice, yeah, brilliant. Okay, uh, so then should we go up to Dollar Cove, which is yeah. is it Jangi Rin? Is it? Or? I I don't want to to murder the, the pronunciation, but, um, <laughs> but yeah, it's sort Jang, of no, known as Dollar Cove, isn't it? Yeah, Jangi Rin. I I would guess. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So this um, one is probably um, my favourite out of these three. This is okay. where I've spent the most time the most time shooting. Okay, so let me find where are we? Dollar Cove. Okay, so we've got four shots of this. So oh, yeah, that's so this that's is, gorgeous. I I really love this 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 beach because of the amount of of rocks and formations there are to work with. Yeah. Um, they are really sort of they kind of frame themselves because each and every one of them are, are so unique and interesting. Yeah, and then you, you combine it with some some longer exposures to to, to create this ethereal effect. Um, yeah, I've spent hours on this beach. Hours, it's oh. really quite a quite a special one for me. That's gorgeous, and because it's because it's west facing, you've you've sort of still got that sunset out to sea thing, which is great. Yeah, you, can st- you still get the sun, you still get the the, the colours, and you, I, for for me, I've created. I think I, you can create some really some really nice seascapes here. And what kind of shutter speeds would you be talking about to get a shot like this? Are we talking like so what, that one again is probably yeah anywhere but probably between two to four. Yeah, I would imagine I can't yeah. remember off the top of my head. No, no. Uh, yeah. But you're free to do whatever you want. I I usually use a six stop filter um, yeah. when I'm shooting seascape, so I I generally don't tend to go anywhere above five seconds. Um, if you wanted to, you could you could really you could push it as far as you wanted to. Go up to a fifteen stop and maybe make a five minute exposure. You just don't yeah. you know if you've got movement in the clouds that could really create some something special. Mm, for sure. Okay, brilliant. So this one, I really I love this. This is so this is a kind of a more um, was, was this shot sort of is it a daytime shot? It's uh, it's not. It's just a, a stormy evening again. <laughs> is it? Yeah. Okay. Um, so it's, it's later on in the evening um, before again the rain came down, um, but yeah, it's I really quite like the silvery uh, the silvery yeah. colours. It was it's it, almost like it's almost like moonlight, right? It's amazing. It's, it's it, gorgeous. Do you know what it? The, the, it was a really really atmospheric evening. I can actually I can still remember it. That you know it was some really uh, strange colours going on in the sky, and it's it's it really created some atmosphere. Yeah. Um, so again, you can see all the rocks. That, um, that that I've used in the foreground. Um, yeah. you, you, again, you want to time your visit here for low lower tide, 
uh, high tide, all of this will be covered. Okay. Um, so you yeah, mid to low tide to get a, a nice balance between the, the water coming over the rocks to use and, and make sure those rocks are nice and wet and shiny and, and create yeah. those, those reflections. So ideally you want to pick a day when the tide is going out and it's quite low and it's just around, that happens just around sunset. That's the perfect day, I guess, because you've got the wet rocks, the low yeah, tide. Yeah, that's when all, when, when, yeah, the, when all the conditions combine to create, create the best. But you know, if, you're, if you're on holiday uh, for a week or two weeks, you can just you know, keep coming back and, yeah, yeah. and see, seeing what's going on each day. You're going to have different conditions every day, so you, you're going to get different pictures every day. That's what it's all about, isn't it, landscape photography? You just got to keep doing yeah, it and definitely, doing it. Um, that's why I, I picked Cornwall, because it's somewhere I've come back to on many, many occasions, and there's sure. always something different to work with. So all, yeah. these, all these images were taken on different trips. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. To, to, you know to get that variety of skies and, 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 and seas and, and settings. Yeah. Unfortunately, on this one, um, you, you, um, your lens got messed up. <laughs> <laughs> is that, that sort of a, a misty morning was it, was it? that was a, again that was a a really ethereal atmospheric evening and it, oh, an evening, was, really? it, it was yeah it was hazy yeah it's really cool i love uh, that I, I amazing yeah, atmosphere I didn't, that sort of i didn't do anything to it <laughs> that's <laughs> really cool <laughs> but again that um those rocks they're kind of i don't know almost like prehistoric aren't they sort of they remind are. me of like a, a dinosaur's tail or something I don't know it's yeah it's really it's cool. just and really that, really atmospheric place yeah and because they kind of go out to sea you've got those that they, they work really well to sort of lead in lines to sort of draw your eye yeah. into the frame don't they Absolutely. that's very cool wow yeah I need to go there I need to go there okay um, and then should we go for your third of those three locations this is we're up to sort of um, Gumwalo Fishing Cove now so this is yes. Right yeah. by the that long, the, so if if we were to extend this map upwards, there's quite a long beach up there, isn't it? Low Bar Beach. Yeah, so Low Bar is also a really nice place to visit. Um, you could definitely go there. Uh, that's really cool. But so if I was doing a, an evening here, so I'd go to the first two locations, see what's going on. Yeah. And then uh, I would. It's a small five minute drive back up to this third location. Yeah. Uh, we would generally stop and uh, on the map. You pointed out the the, the hazel front in. Oh yeah. Um, so we would uh, we would stop there. It's a great pub uh, to get some food and drink and have a rest. Uh, it's got beautiful ocean views, so I could highly re- recommend visiting there. Nice. And then wow. from there, you can walk down a, a small path, coastal path, down to Gunwallow Fishing Cove. I see. And, and what's that like? A ten minute walk or something? Is it? It's n- not even. Not even that. Okay. Five five okay. minutes. It's Brilliant. really really right right on the beach. Um, the pub. Um, and then you can either walk down as, as the first shot you, you, you just pulled up that shot you can even oh, yeah. walk onto the beach yeah. uh, this is uh, not a sandy beach it's a shingle beach okay um, so you can either go straight down to there and create create some ski seascapes there it's nice. uh, again another a beach which is it goes on this one is is uh, a large one it's, you, you're going to have a lot of space and again it's probably not going to be too populated yeah so you can work there or um, you can walk up um, along the cliffs and I've always been fascinated again this this brings out the a personal connection to Cornwall um, I can remember uh, walking along these cliffs as a young child and being absolutely fascinated by this machinery here mm, what um, is it so it was actually uh, salvaged from a from a shipwreck uh, which happened, I think, in, in, in the 1890s. Huh. Uh, so it's been there ever since. And it's, uh, to me, I was just fascinated by it, especially when you hear the stories of, 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 of um, smuggling and, and yeah. uh, there are allegedly secret secret tunnels that lead from the beach back up into the Hazel Front Inn. So I think it's just a, a true Cornish sort of um, story there. Yeah, that's amazing. That is amazing. Well, I, I love the look at all of those. I think the one that I like to go to most is Dollar Cove because I really like the look of those sort of those rocks that kind of go out to see that they yeah, look it's, so cool. Yeah, it, it really is a really, really, really good place. 
brilliant. Okay, and it's great that all of those locations are, you know, super easy to get to. It's parking at each one, easy yeah. walk down. Um, you can go to all of them in one trip, really. You know, they're, yeah. they're all quite sort of um, accessible. Yeah, um, definitely. So um, that's the location. Let's have a very quick look before we get before we um, sign off at sort of um, at the gear that you'd need. So yeah. if you were not shooting ICM, if you were just shooting sort of standard landscape images, traditional landscape images, um, I guess you'd need you know your, your tripod and so on, and maybe some filters, whatever. But yeah. what about lenses? So I asked, I said to you, if you could pick out, if you could take three Sigma lenses with you, what would they be? Um, yeah. And what 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 were your three? So I've started with the fourteen to twenty four. Yeah, I think that is a really good place to start for for coastal photography, uh, especially for places like Senen to capture those wide, huge, immensive skies. Yeah, you, you're going to need a wide angle lens. This one covers you 14 to 24. It's a really, really good wide focal length. Yeah, so and it's extremely be, sharp. This lens, yes, it's extremely, a, extremely sharp. A really good place to start for for um, for shooting down at the coast. Yeah, and just a, you might um, just a reminder if you've sort of um, if you know the signal range a bit that this lens is available in so there are two versions of it. There's one for DSLRs and there's one that's that are designed specifically for mirrorless. So um, the mirrorless one's a little bit smaller and lighter, um, and the mirrorless one has DGDN at the end, whereas the DSLR one has DGHSM. So uh, yeah. So that's the difference. And you can, we've got a picture actually of this one on a Sony because it's available in E mount or L mount. Um, and that's, so that's kind of what it looks like in relation to a Sony body. So relatively relatively small and light. It's not, it's not um, a tiny lens, um, but for a very ultra wide angle f2.8 lens, it's, it's, not, it's not a beast. You know, it's, it's, quite, um, it's quite well balanced on the camera. And it's got in the back of the lens, um, because it's got that kind of fixed petal hood on the front. It makes it a bit more difficult to attach filters. You can attach them, but it's um, but it's kind of a bigger setup. So what we've done is we've built in um, sort of a filter holder into the rear of the lens as well. So the filters are only about the size of a, an SD card. It's really really tiny things, and you just slot them into the rear of the lens, pop it on the camera, and it's done. So it's very clever. And then the filters don't get dirty or splashed because they're kind of inside the the camera. Uh, body I suppose so um, yeah right in front of the sensor um, okay so that's the 14 to 24 uh, next up so then I've gone for the 24 to 70 okay uh, just to give some 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 more versatility uh, again that uh, gives you a really nice range to work with uh, because you might want to uh, focus on shooting some more uh, close-up images or some 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 abstract rock patterns so this this one really gives you some more, some more room to work with um, to create some different types of images. Yes, yeah, the twenty four seventy has got a very close focusing distance as well. So if you want to do some sort of close ups of barnacles on rocks or you know nice sand patterns in the yeah. sand or something, this is a this is a good one too. Like unless you know unless you need a, a true macro and get really close, then this is you know this goes pretty close. So it's yeah, a good sort so of that, all round. It's a good workhorse you, lens, uh, isn't it? This? Yeah, absolutely. It gives you a so much to work with it's you could leave that one you could probably leave that one on all, all day and and you yeah. know be happy yeah absolutely and then there it is again on um a7 body or an a7 III or whatever it is so um yeah it's not not um not a tiny lens but for a, a you know standard zoom f2.8 it's um you know very feels well balanced um, this one again it's got the dgdn at the end of the lens name which means it's specifically designed for full frame mirrorless cameras so it's a little bit smaller than the DSLR version. Um, but as I say, you can get the lens in two versions. So regardless of which camera system you use, you can you can get hold of it. Okay, and uh, your third lens that you went so for? Now I've gone for the, the 100 to 400. Um, yeah. Just because this one would be so cool for capturing waves. Yeah. Uh, at any of the beaches. Um, if you're uh, on a stormy on a stormy evening and you've got some some nice waves rolling in, then this is yeah. gonna, gonna allow you to capture them safely. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, I've been I've been using this lens for a little while, and it it's really, really, really good. It is a lot it of landscape it. photographers have picked this up, haven't they? This lens because it's quite. Yeah. I mean, it's kind of like I guess it, it traditionally it's like a you know a one hundred four hundred kind of a, a sport and wildlife lens, isn't it? But this one is for some reason has really captured the. The kind of the attention of landscapers yeah. because um, it because it's so you, small and light. Yeah, it gives you such a great range to work with. Going up to four hundred, you can really capture some 
some huge waves with that and then get some really nice results and it's not heavy at all as it's, no it's not it's not obtrusive to work with it's you no. can still really really work easily handheld with it so i think it's a, it's a good choice yeah for sure and it's very sharp as well which is you know always helps um and then it's got a few little features on it um yeah focus limiter switch um we've got this afl button which means you can you can sort of customize that to kind of loads of different things depending on the camera that you're using so you could set it to uh, what, well, I think on this on my, I think I've got a Sony A7 III here, and there's like, I don't know, it feels like there's like 50 different options that you can customize it to, so almost anything you want really. And it's got a two mode, two mode stabilizer, which is really useful. But yes, yeah, a, a crazy sharp lens, really is it's brilliant. Um, so yeah. So I think those three lenses give you, you know, ultra wide up to 400. That's a really good. Uh, uh, kit bag to have. You, you're going to be armed for any situation there. Yeah, you've covered almost, apart from between 70 and 100, you've, come, you've covered the Sorry. entire kind of, yeah, well, you know. <laughs> we need a 70 to 100 lens so that we can put it in your kit bag and then you've got everything. In. But no, like, yeah, like you say, that covers like everything that you could really ever want, doesn't it? I mean, no one wants to shoot wider than 14 and no one really wants exactly. to shoot like longer than a 400 at a landscape location. So that's, um, yeah, that's, that's a, good, a good three, a wise choice, wise choice. Brilliant. Well, thank you very much, Mark. I'm just conscious of um, of time, so um, yeah, uh, we'll um, we'll probably draw it to a close there. But that's super, super useful. Thanks so much for your thoughts on on those um, on those three locations and um, and sort of sharing all of that really useful information. And I know I am definitely going to be putting that to use this uh, this summer when I'm down in Cornwall. And there's that map again to remind you of where those locations are. So with all that said. Uh, I hope that we'll see you soon and thanks again for tuning in and a big thanks to Mark for um, for uh, sharing all that with us and uh, I will leave you with my favourite shot of the bunch which I think is this one and we will see you very soon. Bye.